was bleeding. The child stated that he was playing with Mary and Norma, and one of them pushed him seven feet from the ground. This caused severe blood trauma to his head. That same evening, parents stated that the girls attempted to strangle their children in a sand pit. When the girls were in police custody, they were both questioned and of course denied any involvement at first. Eventually, Norma put the blame on Mary, stating, quote, Mary went to one of the girls and said, what happens if you choke someone? Do they die? End quote. Mary then proceeds to place her hands around the girl's throat and squeezed. Norma stated that the girl turned purple and she told Mary to stop, but she wouldn't. She did the same thing to a little girl named Pauline and another girl named Susan Cornish. Police were informed of this incident and her potential to be violent. Unfortunately, due to Mary's enormous age, the girls were both only given warnings. On May 25th, 1968, just one day before her 11th birthday, two boys were playing in an old abandoned house when they discovered the lifeless body of a four-year-old boy, Martin Brown, laying with his arms stretched out in an upstairs bedroom at approximately 3.30 p.m. He had blood and foam around his mouth, but there were no signs of any foul play. A local workman from the community arrived to attempt CPR, but was unsuccessful. Mary and Norma were standing in the doorway of the room, but they were told to leave. After the girls left, they knocked on the door of Martin's aunt house to inform her that Martin had an accident but they weren't sure if it was really him because he had blood all over him. The next day, an autopsy was performed on Martin by Dr. Bernard Knight. Dr. Knight could not find any violent marks on the boy's body, so Martin's death was ruled as him dying of poison through ingesting tablets. On June 7th, there was a request for an open verdict. On May 26, which was Mary's 11th birthday, she and her neighbor Norma broke into a nursery and vandalized the place. They destroyed books, writing foul words on the walls, removing tiles off the slate, and turning over desks. The staff discovered the break-in the next day and immediately informed the police. Police discovered several notes that someone admitted to murdering Martin Brown. The police just assumed that this was a prank and didn't take the notes serious. On May 29th, just shortly before Martin's funeral, Mary and Norma contacted his mother and asked if they could see her son. Martin's mother informed them that they could not see him because he was dead. The girls replied, quote, oh, I know he's dead. I want to see him in his coffin, end quote. On July 31st, 1968, three-year-old Brian Howe went missing that afternoon while he was playing outside with one of his siblings, their dog, and, of course, Norma and Mary. His relatives and people around the community began a search party and his body was found at 11.10 p.m. between two large concrete blocks. He noticed that someone tried to hide his body but failed to do so. The child had bluish purplish lips, bruises and scratches on his neck. There were a pair of scissors found by his feet. When an autopsy was performed, it was determined that Brian
was born on January 30th, 1987 in Broward County, Florida. His friend and family described him as a bright and street smart person. Lionel had a long eight-year history of negative behavior problems. He fought, lied, stole, and bullied his peers. He had 15 school suspensions. When a psychologist examined him, his test came back as to having a, quote, high potential for violence, uncontrolled feelings of anger, resentment, and poor impulse control, end quote. On July 28th, 
households for the most part. Both of their parents were separated. They both struggled in school and did not attend school for the most part. John and Robert both shoplifted and John had a violent past. Robert's mother, Anna Thompson, was described as being an alcoholic. Robert was born into a flawed family. He was the fifth of seven children. His brother and sister both had learning disabilities, and he split his time between his mother's Susan house and his father's Neil's house. On Friday, February 1993, 10-year-old Robert and John decided to skip school that day and went to New Strand Shopping Center in Boodle, United Kingdom. They decided to shoplift some candy, a troll doll, some batteries, and blue paint. The boys later admitted that they went to the shopping center to abduct a child. was brutally tortured. His little body was found by two school 
2004, James's mother, Denise, was able to track Robert down, but she was so paralyzed with hatred that she was unable to confront him. Robert seemed to be living a quiet life, but John, on the other hand, ran into some trouble. In 2010, he was arrested and charged with being in possession with underage explicit photographs. He became eligible for parole in 2013. During that time, Ralph, which was James's father, told the parole board that he could not forgive his son's killers and John should not be released. John was released in 2017, but was arrested and charged again for the same crime and also having a manual that provided instructions on having intercourse with the minors were found on his computer. He was sentenced to three years and four months in prison. Throughout the years, Denise did several interviews. She wrote a book in 2018 titled, quote, I Let Him Go, end quote. And James's dad wrote a book called, quote, My James, end quote. There was a film made based on this story that was made without the permission of James's family. as well.